Hello, in this video we're going to introduce you to the Flowcode user interface. When you first load Flowcode this is the screen you see and you can choose a new project and you have a choice of developing a program for app developer or embedded. We're interested in embedded and this is the range of microcontrollers you can choose from. There are around 1,700 different microcontrollers uh, in the flow code portfolio. And in this case, I've got a PIC 18877. Uh, you can choose from the list. You can see the peripherals that that part has, so you can make a choice and you can see the configuration uh, there. What I'm going to do actually is I'm going to cheat and I'm going to choose a BL0011, which is the device I have here from Matrix. And this sets up the hardware in terms of the clock and everything else. Once you've made your choice of microcontroller, this is the screen you see. Um, the first thing you notice is there are some panels, a 2D panel and a 3D panel. And this is where you design your electronic system. You make a selection from the component libraries of the parts you want. So in this case, we might have um, an array of input switches, uh, perhaps an array of LEDs as well, um, perhaps a display. So you make a choice of the parts that you want. There's a huge range of parts, inputs, outputs, lots of displays, sensors, some storage components, mathematics components, DSP components, lots of comms parts from chip to chip com communication systems like SPI and I2C, right through to Bluetooth, Zigbee and others. Um, there's also various other uh, components that you can use for creating uh, parts um, and for making your user interfaces look much neater. Once you've got your parts on your panel, you make the connections to the chip. So you can use this interface to make individual connections to the pins that you want. Um, and you set up the connections to your microcontroller. You can see the microcontroller you've chosen by going view target device. And if you want to combine um, your program with 3D parts, particularly motors, then what you can do is you can drag those onto the 3D panel. Um, you can import SolidWorks uh, files and connect them and characterize them um, in terms of their movement. And um, this allows you to uh, design fantastic electromechanical systems as well. So a large range of parts, 2D and 3D. Once you've created your system, you can then program it um, either using the command icons from the top. So you just drag the command icons that you want uh, from the top or from the Project Explorer here. Once you've got an icon onto the panel, you click it twice and you enter some parameters to create the actual command itself. So we've got the panels, we've seen the properties, you've seen the um, basic commands. The next thing you might want to do is create a subroutine. So you just create a subroutine like that, and then you can create a sub program in, in that, uh, that subroutine. You can see two at once there, and you can call one um, macro from another. In the Project Explorer, you can look at the uh, connections to your chip. Uh, you can look at your panels. You can see all of the variables you're using. Uh, you can declare lots of variables of different types. You can look at the different hardware macros that you've got. And importantly, you can look at the hardware macros. So once you put a component on a panel, these are all the commands that are available to you. So you can use those commands to construct your programs. Once you've created your program, you can simulate it. If you have some matrix hardware like this, then you have access to full in-circuit debug and ghost. And ghost is effectively a logic analyzer and a multi-channel oscilloscope. You can also watch the variables as you simulate to help debug your program. 
Once you've created your program, you can build it. And flow, flow code first compiles to C, then it compiles to hex, and then you can link um, different programmers to it so that you can send the program into your chip. So that's a very brief summary of what flow code embedded allows you to do. In subsequent videos, we'll show you how to construct programs.